Funding for the Trade Best Practice Series is provided by the Benjamin Moore and Company Foundation in partnership with Teach Construction and through the generous support of PDCA sponsors and members. Well, the time has come. Let's talk about brushing. There's actually a lot to know about brushing, especially brushing well. We'll go over everything now, then we'll head into the field to see it in action. Let's start with the parts of a brush. First, there's the handle. Most professionals prefer the feel of a wood handle. They actually come in all shapes, sash, wall, rat tail, shasta, etc. The ferrule holds the bristles on the handle. Professional ferrules are usually stainless steel or plated steel to help prevent rust. Next come the bristles. You wouldn't guess it, but there is a ton of technology in paintbrush bristles. There are two bristle types. Natural bristles are made from real hog's hair. These are for solvent-based finishes only, like oil paint. Natural bristles will be completely ruined if they're cleaned with water or used with water-based finishes. The bristles absorb water just like a sponge. Synthetic bristles are made from polyester or nylon, like the stuff in fishing line and outdoor jackets. Paintbrush bristles are super specialized laboratory nylon and polyester. Brush manufacturers have labs where they study how this or that material picks up paint from a bucket and releases it on the substrate. Generally speaking, nylon is easier to clean but can soften in warm weather or with prolonged use in latex paint because nylon absorbs water. This means a nylon brush can get mushy at the end of a hot summer day. Polyester is firmer because it doesn't absorb water, but on the other hand, it doesn't pick up and release paint as well as nylon does. That means you'll spend more time reloading your brush. Also, polyester is harder to clean. There is no perfect bristle material. Lots of trade-offs, right? So which is better? Well, a combination, of course, and most quality professional brushes are a super secret blend of specialized filaments. We talked about technology before, right? Well, brush engineers and their laboratories know that pointed or tipped bristle filaments are more productive and produce a better finish than flat cut or chopped off filaments. So in a professional brush, every single bristle is tipped, drawn to a fine point. This tipping allows the brush to release paint efficiently for a smooth appearance. Manufacturers guard their tipping processes very closely. It's key to what gives their brushes excellent paint pickup and release and produces fine finishes. Then there's brush taper. Look at the brush sideways. If the bristles taper to a point, it means they're designed to help pump out more paint than cheap or poorly designed brushes. Okay, here's a pro tip. If you see somebody doing the face test, you'll know they are a total amateur. Your face doesn't really tell you anything about how a brush will pick up and release paint. You only get that from using a brush with paint. You don't want the softest brush, you want the most productive brush. But it is relaxing. Let's talk about brush size. First, there's brush width. Three inches, the general purpose professional standard. Smaller brushes have their place, but generally three inch brushes hold plenty of paint while giving you good control. Then there's brush thickness. This is often overlooked. Short answer, thicker brushes hold more paint. Makes sense, right? A three inch brush this thick will always hold more paint than a three inch brush this thick. Sash or trim brushes are almost always thinner than the same size and shape to wall brushes. Wall, sash, angled, varnish, there are a lot of variables in choosing a brush. Professional painters know which tool is most productive for a particular situation. Just starting to learn precision painting? A great brush to practice precision painting with is a thin angle sash brush. You're welcome. To summarize, you always want to paint with the most productive, in other words, biggest, brush that will give you the desired results. Now here are some things to know about paint selection. Coverage is how many square feet a gallon will cover. This can range from say 200 to 400 square feet per gallon. 
So if high coverage paint is specified, you will buy and apply fewer gallons. Hide is how well a paint hides the previous color. High quality paint covers better, of course, than poor quality paint. Sheen is how light reflects off a painted surface. High gloss paints can be shiny like a piano, while flat paint doesn't reflect any light. Let's talk a minute about professional paint. It is high performance, dries quickly, and you can't back brush it. So lay it on, brush it out, and leave it alone. Overbrushing means the paint started to dry before it leveled out. And that means nasty brush marks. So if you're going to avoid overbrushing, it's best to paint with confidence. Confidence comes with practice. And practice brings a sure and steady hand to painting. That means productive work and professional results. Okay, we ready to paint? To the field! As we mentioned before, you may find yourself working with other trades on job sites. Such is the case here. Notice how the floor protection doesn't meet the wall. That's because the crew installing the baseboard trim needed to have space for installation. But no matter the situation you find yourself in, proper brush technique is key. This means loading your brush with enough paint and not over brushing. You and your brush will sometimes be in odd angles. But if you remember to hold the brush like a pencil at the ferrule, you'll find you can get great results no matter what position you are in. Other common types of trim work include windows and doors. A simple coat is all that is needed. Remember, lay it on, brush it out, and leave it alone. Some brushwork can really highlight the painter's skill, like this fireplace. Trade best practices. Brush loading. First, hold the brush like a pencil, not a shovel. Keeping your fingers on the ferrule will give you better control. First, load the brush. Note that loading a brush is not covering a brush. Dip the bristles only about half to three quarters of the bristle length. This will make it easier to control the paint and be a neat painter. Next, just lightly tap the loaded bristles against the inside of the can to control the paint and help limit dripping. Don't drag the brush against the lip of the can to remove excess paint. That removes the paint you just loaded. It just takes a couple of taps to knock off any excess and you'll still have a fully loaded and very productive brush. Brush types. On this lower quality brush, the bristles have been chopped off square. Square cut or chopped brush bristles can never produce an even and smooth finish. Professional quality bristles are flagged, meaning the ends are split. That allows them to hold more paint so they're more productive. Professional quality bristles are also tipped, which means they are brought to a fine point that allows them to lay down a smooth and even professional finish. Cutting in. Cutting in has traditionally been done with a brush. However, it's now a best practice to use a more productive system. Cut in with both a brush and mini roller. The brush still makes for a clean edge line while the mini roller widens the cut with a roller texture. There are several advantages to this. Better coverage, it's faster, eliminates hat banding, same stipple, more efficient coverage of tight spots, like above and below windows. It's better coverage, it's faster. Now that's a productive system. Mi nombre es Víctor Maximiliano y yo trabajo para Shamrock, soy foreman. Lo por lo normal, pues, uh, me encargo de los trabajos, soy el encargado de los trabajos y me encargo de un grupo de personas que trabaja conmigo. Bueno, empecé desde muy joven, a los 18, 17, y 
pues ya tengo 20 años trabajando en la pintura y la verdad me, me agrada mucho ser pintor. Bueno, pues de hecho me gusta todo. Cuando a alguien le gusta su trabajo, le gusta hacer de todo. Ah, me gusta sprayar, rolear, preparar. Básicamente me gusta mi trabajo. Me gusta lo que hago. Next up, rolling. Where were we? Oh, you're still here. 